Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to my AK Muse show. If you want to follow what's going on in the guitar and music world, but never have time for this, you've come to the right place. And today I'm going to tell you about the future of Gibson and Dean guitars, how much a Chiron earned last year, uh, whether you need to buy an expensive and vintage guitar or not, and what job Banamasa shared with us. There were a lot of news in October, so I'm going to make a second Akin News episode uh, for October news to cover the most interesting events for you. So subscribe to my channel and you don't miss it. And if you think um, monthly Akin News is not enough for you and you're interested in more news, consider subscribing to my uh, TikTok, Instagram account and to my Patreon where starting this week I'm going to share uh, more unique news for you. The most interesting events, don't miss it. And of course, you can find the links to those platforms in the description. Check them out. Like this video, it's easy for you and good for the video because YouTube will recommend this to others. And let's get started. And I'm returning to the previous format of my Akin Muse, where I'm going to read out the summary of the most interesting events for you and give my comments. Because, you know, my memory is very limited and every time I'm learning something new, uh, as a result, I forget something else. And usually it looks like, uh, Kirk Hammett, what should I say there? I'm pretty sure you don't want it, I don't want it too. Agree? <laughs> cool, uh, let's start. According to the document filed with Company's House on September 29th of 2023, at Chiron, uh, Limited's annual turnover decreased from uh, almost 35 million pounds in 2021 to 23.5 million of pounds in 2022. Despite this, the company still made an impressive profit of 13 million of pounds after tax. Pretty impressive. Uh, the decrease in revenue could be attributed in, to the fact that Chiron did not release an album in 2022, unlike in 2021, uh, which was sold uh, for 1.3 million copies and became the fifth best-selling album of the year. Hmm, that's cool. Sheeran also faced several lawsuits in 2022, including one where he was sued for $100 million over supposed song similarity with Martin Gay's Let's Get It On. However, he won all the lawsuits and still appeared on the Times 2023 rich list. Not bad at all, especially if you remember that the recent UK study showed that a lot of musicians they do not earn even £1,400 a year. Compare this to uh, 13 millions of pounds. And more about lawsuits. According to a recent article on Guitars.com, Dean Guitars, parent company Armadillo Enterprises, is facing foreclosure over $400 million uh, US dollars bank debt. Uh, well, in National Bank, has sued Armadillo for unpaid loan repayments and is seeking foreclosure on the company's assets. The bank also alleges that Armadillo made uh, fraudulent financial reports to both the bank and the IRS about its income and overall value. Armadillo is a parent company of Dean Guitars, uh, Luna Guitars and D-Drum. The company has been in legal trouble since 2019 when Gibson Brands filed a lawsuit against it for trademark infringement. In August 2023, Armadillo lost the lawsuit and was ordered to pay $4,000 in restitution to Gibson. The company's current state is precocious and remains to be seen if they can recover from its legal and financial troubles. I told about this previously, check it out my previous videos if you are interested in what's going on with Dean Guitars. And as we started talking about Gibson, here's the more news for you. 
Caesar Joykin, the CEO and president of Gibson, has shared his thoughts on how the company's former leaders had lost focus on what's at the heart of the brand. Hmm, that's interesting. Remember, I mentioned that it will be interesting to hear from the new CEO uh, what's his vision and what we can expect from Gibson. Let's check it out. In a recent interview with Dean DeRay, uh, Gerican discussed on the company's foray into consumer electronic at one point, calling it an example of losing focus of what Gibson does best. He argues that the company already possesses the playbook for success. They only have to look to their past to find it. <laughs> uh, that's what I expected. More ancient relics. He continues. And now we have an extra level of complexity. What happened during that golden era really defined us. But at the same time, we need to think about how do we take innovation going forward. Gibson is a really great company who gave us such models like Flying V, Les Paul, SG and many others. But lastly, it feels uh, whatever they are doing is just remaking, remaking and remaking their uh, guitars they've made before, kind of reissue of 1960s, 1950s, whatever. Nothing new. I hope this changes. And the news from their child company Epiphone. Epiphone is set to release a new multi-effects pedal called the Power Player's uh, Multi-Effects Pedal. The pedal has three effects overdrive, distortion and delay. Almost everything I need, each with designated controls uh, and foot switches. It also has four foot switch uh, for tap tempo and activating a tuner on a small color LED screen. The pedal's design is similar to the Joy TC1 tone chain, which was released in 2020. Hmm. The Epiphone Power Player multi-effect pedal is listed on Sam Ash's website, but it's not yet clear uh, when it will be available for purchase. Does not sound like innovations to me. <laughs> Why is it similar to Joy pedal? And of course, as we talked about Gibson, now it's time to talk about Fender. Fender has teased a potential signature bass with actor and musician Keanu Reeves in a new video posted to social media. Reeves plays bass in the band Dogstar, which reunited earlier this year. I told about this in my other 18 Muse video. And the trio released their first album in 23 years that October, titled Somewhere Between the Power Lines and Palm Trees. In the video, Reeves can be seen playing a precision bass, which he has been captured uh, with that recent Dogstar shows. That bass shows some wear and tear on the body. He later holds up a shiny new blue model too, and gives it a good sniff test. Fender is yet to officially confirm the release of the special uh, spectaculative signature model. Soon we'll see. Another news. Gus G, the former Ozzy Osbourne guitarist, believes that the sound and tone of guitar comes within the player and not from the gear. He argues that the core of the sound and expression comes from within you. <gasps> Did you know? <laughs> and that it's how you approach and touch the guitar that matters. In a recent interview with That Metal Interview podcast, Gus G admits to having a super simple rig made up of just an amp and a few pedals. He uses an overdrive by J Rocket Audio Design called the Archer uh, to boost his signal and distortion, along with a delay pedal. On the guitar side of things, he uses his Jackson Signature Star guitar. As you know, earlier this year, uh, Steve Lukather and many others said exactly the same thing. No major gear? <laughs> I will have to learn how to play guitar. John Mayer has a new custom shovel guitar uh, that was made from the hardwood floor of Madison Square Garden, where he played two sold-out shows earlier this month. The guitar was commissioned by The Garden and made by Shovel Custom Shop Master Builder Joe Williams. The body of the guitar is made from wood taken from the floor of the venue, 
and there is a sticker displaying the Nix logo on the X2. Also, according to guitar.com, in 1981 Gibson Les Paul Custom is currently for sale on Reverb, which was made from that hardwood floor. Paul Reed may have a panic attack from this use uh, somewhere in his wood library. Just kidding. Andy Summers, the former guitarist of The Police, recently shared his thoughts on vintage guitars in an interview with The Jeremy White Show. He believes that the age of a guitar uh, does not determine its quality or superiority, especially given the way technology has been improving over the decades. He argues that all gear is just tools, and that vintage guitars are not necessarily better than new ones. However, he admits to uh, having one particular vintage guitar, his 1963 Fender Telecaster, that he would never sell. In terms of his own rig, he uses a Black Star St. James amp and a small pedal board with only three or four pedals on it. Disagree? I would not recommend you to argue with the policeman. <laughs> <laughs> you have right to stay silent, everything you say can be used against you. Chad Zamish, the guitar tech for Metallica, recently reflected on how the band switched from conventional guitar amps to digital modelers. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> no way! <laughs> In an interview with RGM Music Technology, Chad was asked whether he does all the rig building or if he just does the maintenance of guitar setups for James Hatfield and Gear Hammond. He replied that they had just put their rags together and went from typical analog guitar amps and cabinets to digital setup with XFX. The switch happened when they had to play a show in Antarctica in 2013, where they couldn't bring any amps uh, due to environmental issues. Chad explained that all the rigs now sound exactly the same, rather than analog amps being finicky. He also added that digital modelers are cheaper to ship around and more reliable. What a heretic! <laughs> and you might know that earlier this year, Nita Strauss revealed that they used digital amp modeling to record their last album. And she stated that no one could distinguish is it the real amp or is it sound, martial sound, comes from something else. And the last about gear. Green Day is launching an official shop on Reverb.com, where nearly 100 pieces of gear used in the studio and on tour by band will be available for purchase. The gear includes dozens of guitars, including several rare models, unique prototypes, and a Gresh Electromatic that Billy Joe Armstrong played in the band uh, back in the USA music video. The shop will also feature a prize show for a one-of-kind Gibson guitar owned by Armstrong. Hmm, sounds interesting. I don't have any money to buy any of such rare guitars or any equipment, but who knows, maybe I just find something cool for fun. I do not often hear something from Joe Bonamassa, but that October he was interviewed by various journalists, so I have a lot for you. There are some interesting picks. Joe Bonamassa, the blue rock guitarist, has revealed that his most expensive guitar is a 1958 Gibson Carina Flying V that he calls Donny J. He bought it over 400,000 uh, US dollars from his friend Don in Oklahoma, who had bought it in 1976 for 1100. The guitar is in mint condition and is the cleanest he has ever seen. It's a part of his 500-piece vintage instrument gear collection. I don't know what shocks me more, the cost of this particular guitar or this 500 pieces collection. <laughs> I started thinking I don't really have many guitars, <laughs> at least not so many. Also, Joe Bonamassa has revealed the story behind his famous 1960 Gibson Les Paul standard, the Bowling Burst. The guitar was originally owned by David Brown, who bought it in 1966 for 125 US in Denver. Brown loaned the guitar to Tommy Bowling when his cult top was stolen in early 70s. 
and Dolan played it throughout his time with The Fear and Deep Purple. Bonamassa spent a decade searching for the guitar before finally locating Brown in Mo Utah. He paid Brown in cash and two months later Brown died in a car accident. Hmm. His last text to his daughter was I burned the money in a desert. Bonamassa calls it the strangest guitar deal I ever did. What? <laughs> it's good that it happened two months later, not two days. Otherwise, it would be super suspicious. <laughs> Joe Bonamassa has teased that he has Martin signature model in the works. He shared a photo of his 1941 Martin model in its case on a plane strapped into its own seat. According to the caption, they were on a flight bound to Nazareth, Pennsylvania. The guitar is being inspected and documented for a special collaboration uh, that uh, Nerdville and Martin are doing next year. 1941 year model? It's 82 years old guitar! It's almost one and a half times older than Bonamassa himself. I assume that would be an interesting project. Joe Bonamassa has shared what he believes make a good entertainer and what defines him as a musician. In the new issue of Guitarist magazine, Bonamassa explained how he defines himself as an artist, having been in the music industry for so long. I am in the entertainment business. I am not in the guitar business. I am not in the vintage guitar business. I am not in the blues business. I'm not in the singing business. I am not in any other business apart from the entertainment business. When the naysayers come out and say, this person's a better guitar player than Joe, I'm like, okay, I agree with all of it, but I can entertain people. I learned from people like Buddy Guy and BB King and George Thorogood and many others like them. I put that suit on and I go out there it's a part of the character. I assume those 500 guitars are entertainment tools, right? <laughs> Joe Bonamassa has spoken about how he used the doubts of others to fuel his ambition for music. In an interview of the Tone Talk podcast, Bonamassa shared how age should not influence anybody to give up and how he used spite as a great motivator. He believes that all gear is just tools and that vintage guitars are not necessarily better than new ones. Bonamassa has just released his latest album, Blues Deluxe Volume 2, which celebrates the 20th anniversary of the original Blues Deluxe album, which landed in 2003. Spite can be a good motivator, especially if you don't have a sister like Dave Mustaine. If you understand what I'm talking about, <laughs> check it out. Giovanna Massa, the blues rock guitarist, has revealed why he's decided uh, to take a step back from extensive warm-up routines. He now strips his uh, pre-show prep right down and only sound checks and plays a song that has a decent solo before shutting down until the show. He believes that this approach has made him more lyrical as a soloist. He argues that warming up with the bunch of nonsense uh, just to get the hands moving is not necessary, and that uh, it can be counterproductive. Bonamassa also advises that if you're ever stuck in a rut, stop playing instead of powering out of it, because it can lead to frustration. Sounds reasonable to me, but I don't have enough experience to judge this. What do you think? Let me know in comments what works for you. According to Joe Bonamassa, James Hatfield, the frontman of Metallica, is really underrated as a rhythm player. Bonamassa believes that Hatfield's right hand is serious and that he is one of the greatest rhythm guitarists of all the time, at least in the realm of heavy metal. Bonamassa also praised Metallica for aging well over the course of their 40-year career. A lot of news, huh? It's probably enough for today. Let me know in comments uh, what you like the most. And like I mentioned, I'm working on the second video, uh, so subscribe to my channel and hit the bell, you won't miss it. Also consider subscribing to my other platforms like Instagram and TikTok, 
where I started posting news as well and also consider supporting me on Patreon where for crunch level and above I'm going to share the unique news and also you can find different stuff there including tips and tricks and of course my silly jokes. And don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and see you soon.